Hi everyone, these are the teacher prep instructions and student tutorial for PBS 3.1.6, the Graham Staining Lab. Um, you'll start with your students grabbing their plates from the incubator. Um, our plates have been in there for about four days before we started the Graham Staining Lab. Um, I think three is probably enough. Um, they'll need to have those at their lab area. Um, in each of the student buckets, I have eight lab tables with four students per table. I have a reusable um, dish for them to do the staining in. Um, I have an alcohol lamp and um, a lighter. I've given the students um, a tape and marker for labeling their samples. Um, we have a clothespin for the staining process, an inoculating loop, reusable metal one. You can also um, provide your students with the disposable plastic ones. Um, I gave each student group four clean microscope slides. Um, each student is responsible for doing one uh, gram stain sample. And then I gave them a container of water um, that they can just refill um, from the sink. Um, I gave them this gram stains and here they are in order. So I have crystal violet. I have Graham's iodine. Then I put the ethanol um, from the kit. It comes in the kit like this, um, but I was worried that the students might drop it and it could light on fire um, since it's flammable. So I put the ethanol in these reusable containers so that they would close up um, during the experiment. So the ethanol for decolorization. And then I also have the final stain safranin here. And those are all the supplies that your students will need um, to conduct 3.1.6 as part of the experiment. When you're ready to begin with your first sample, um, you're going to take the microscope slide, just place it in front of you, and you're gonna put one small drop of water in the center of the slide. It's important that it's a small drop of water um, because we want it to, it has to air dry before we can move on to the next step of the experiment. Okay, once you have your water there, you're going to go ahead and light your burner Make sure it's clear of things and um, there's no paper nearby. Um, you'll also want to make sure all of your stains are away from the flame as well. So you'll sterilize your loop until it turns orange. Okay, you'll let it um, out of the flame, let it cool. And then what we'll be doing is removing um, one of the yellow colonies from the patient samples, um, one that you've isolated. If you and your group members weren't able to isolate a colony, you can see another group to get a colony from them, um, or your teacher may have one as well um, that they'll be willing to share with you. The reason we're taking the yellow colonies is because that's the one that we believe is responsible um, for what's causing the patients to be ill at the hospital. Um, remember, all 11 hospital patients had this yellow colony in common when we did the gross morphology um, of the bacteria. So this is probably cool now. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna touch this to one of the colonies. And it's important that you don't grab too much bacteria. You can see there's hardly anything on the loop. And remember, this is microscopic. If we have, if it's too clumpy, it's gonna be difficult for us to see under the microscope. So we just need to touch it to the bacterial sample. And then we're going to, in a circular motion, just mix it in on the slide. If you're able to kind of spread the bacteria out a little bit on the slide, it will end up drying faster, which will help speed up the process. You're going to sterilize your loop. Okay, and now we will um, extinguish the flame and let our slide dry and wait for the next step. Okay. Um, after the slide, the sample has dried completely on the slide, so you need to let it air dry. Um, it took some of our samples about 10 minutes to air dry um, in class. Um, once you're finished with the air drying, you can move on to 
step number 10 in the Project Lead the Way instructions, which are under fixation. So if you're following along in Project Lead the Way, this starts at step 10. Um, you're going to relight your alcohol burner. And in my class, we use these um, clothespins. And um, you can see I've actually, while we were waiting, I added a label to the slide. So I just put my name and period, my class period here um, on the slide. And I'm going to um, use the clothespin to help me um, with this process for staining. And the bacterial specimen is on top of this slide, so it's facing upward, and that's important. And so we're gonna do the fixation step of uh, gram staining now. And the way that we'll do that is just to run the slide through the flame three times. So we're passing it through three times. You don't wanna hold it in the flame at any point, you just run it through three times. So we'll go like this, one, two and three. Being careful not to burn your label if you have your label on and um, we don't want to hold it over the flame that's important as well. Um, when you're finished you're going to just extinguish the flame we don't need it out anymore um, and um, what's happened during this step is we've fixed the bacteria to the slide so that it doesn't rinse off during the rest of the process. Right, we'll move on to the next part and that's gonna be our first stain. And so we're gonna use this little bucket to stain over. And we'll start with our first stain, which is crystal violet. And you're going to drop crystal violet. You'll flood the area, I remember it's on the top of the slide here, um, with crystal violet, two, three, four. Um, you don't wanna overdo it, so three to four drops is plenty for each of these um, pieces of stain. And then you need to start your timer for one minute. So once the stain has been on for one minute, we're going to take the water and we'll be rinsing um, the stain off of the slide um, using the water. Excuse me. Remember the stain can um, stain your clothing, so you wanna be careful um, as you're using it in class. It's probably helpful if you have a lab partner to help you with this part. And you're just gonna rinse it down like this. Remember a minute has passed, we're gonna rinse it um, until most of the color has come off the slide. You can refill your water as necessary at the sink. Okay, and then the instructions say do not dry um, or wipe down the slide. So we're finished with um, the crystal violet step and we're ready to move on to the next step. So in the next step, we're going to use Graham's iodine. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. So I'm gonna take the Graham's iodine and I'm gonna put um, no more than four drops. One, two, three, four. Um, here and we'll start the timer for one minute. And once one minute has passed, you will rinse the Graham's iodine off um, the same way that we did before. So hold it at an angle and then you'll just run it down one until most of the color goes off of the slide. Okay. And then we're ready to move to the next step. In the next step, we'll be using ethanol, um, which is here. It's highly flammable, so make sure that your flame is out, especially um, at this point when you're doing this. You should have extinguished it at the beginning. And you're going to, um, this is the most important step, and it's a place where you can uh, get a false positive or a false negative if you don't follow the directions um, carefully. And so what we're gonna do is hold it at a 45 degree angle, and we'll um, drop the ethanol from the top and let it roll past. We can stop when there's no more color that comes out, or if you get to 30 seconds, then you should stop. So I'm just gonna start dropping it here. You can see the color is coming out of my sample. I'm gonna keep going. I need a little bit more. And I don't see any more color leaving, so I think we're good on that step. And then we're gonna rinse with water just like we did before. The final step is to add safranin. Um, so you'll open up your safranin container. And again, you'll put um, one, two, three, four, maybe 
four drops um, on the slide. You'll set your timer for one minute. After one minute, you can rinse the slide um, with water. So again, we'll just run it over the sample um, until most of the color is off. If you're ready to view your sample, at this point, you would just pat the sample dry, um, just carefully, gently pat it dry, and you can view it under the microscope um, and look for the morphology of the cells and the gram results at that point. For comparison, these are the expected results provided to us from Project Lead the Way. Remember, we gram stained the yellow colored colonies from each of the patient samples, one, two, and three, and that should be um, from the screen here what you see on your own slides. If you saw something different, it could have been that you got a different colored colony um, that you were working with when you did your gram stain.